Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the GFS, the GM, the ESMWF and the GFS ensembles for the potential for some quite warm weather we could be seeing over the next couple of weeks. It has backed off a little bit um, but there's still a decent chance we do see especially um, dry and warm weather in the further eastwards and southwards. Do you remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe as it really does help me out. But now into the video. We're currently having a look at the GFS operational run um, and all the models are quite confused with the upcoming pattern as it is um, as the northern hemisphere is starting to unlock from the effects of the sudden stratospheric warming. And we've seen a very cold spell of weather over the American that, uh, over in America, and that's going to continue over the next couple of days. And do check out my video that I made yesterday on uh, winter storm uh, Yuri and the polar vortex going to America. Now that's going to power up the jet stream. As you can see, these lows are coming out of America, and you see these deep purples, and that's Big areas of low pressure are powering up the jet stream, but it's really how far inland they come and, toward, and how far into the UK they come. As ahead of them, they are pulling up southerly winds, very warm air, uh, potentially can uh, move further north, but always colder air to our northeast that we could be tapping into if we get heights rising again to our north. But it's a very uh, different pattern we're looking up uh, for the next few weeks. As again, as I said, the effects of the sudden stratospheric warming are starting to wear off. It's not removing all blocking from the northern hemisphere. As you can see, our pockets of higher pressure, but it's definitely like the jet stream and the westerly winds are going to be powering up. Um, and what it does mean is it does pr provide a lot of uncertainty as we do want to build that euro high. That's what the models have been wanting to build, but it's looking like the westerlies are trying to block that away and push it away. Um, and that could be the same with the potential for a colder spell into March. It's very confusing at the moment, and, and, and I'll show you that on the ensembles uh, by the, at the end of the video. But we'll run through the GFS, and you can see low pressure really does maintain out in the Atlantic, but we do start to try and build high pressure out in towards Europe, and that will try and build up southerly winds, sou southerly or southwesterly winds. You can see some quite warm air is going to our east, clipping spots of southeast this weekend. End. And initially we thought that could be coming straight towards the UK, but it's looked like it's trended further east and we've maintained more low pressure. But as we head towards the middle of next week, the high never really builds in on this GFS run. And although the southeast of the UK maintains fairly mild and warm, we do have southwesterly winds that so will be bringing in weather fronts. You can see some quite cold air out in the Atlantic again, could be providing energy for more weather fronts. And you see where these lows are again. Although the air is pretty mild, um, with some sunshine it will feel quite warm. With, always with showers and weather fronts around, it's never going to quite reach sort of potentially heat wave sort of scenario. But you can see over towards southern Europe, Italy, Spain, even most parts of France, could be seeing some very warm conditions. And we're just not quite getting under that high pressure to give us those warm air, that warm air. But it can still subject to change. As we run through towards day 10, you can see high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north, real westerly regime, and little to no northern blocking if we have a look at the northern hemisphere. There's a bit of an arctic high, maybe a little bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge building up towards Greenland, but again, you can see the polar vortex is heavily over towards Canada colder air pushing into parts of southern Canada into America not going as far southwards as we have had this week, but it's really going to be powering up those lows in the jet stream, pushing uh, those uh, lows our way, uh, and you can see it really powers up the jet stream. And again, high pressure is further south, and is it? And it is trying to build it, but you can always see low pressure to our north, trying to pull in cooler air, not really cold air. It does look quite cold up uh, upper airs, but coming off the Atlantic, dew points will be higher, so it may it won't give it a temperature sufficient enough for any snow, apart from perhaps over some hill, hills and mountainous areas. Most other places. With this rain, uh, we'll, we'll just have rain, uh, and further southwards we could be quite mild. Again, at the moment, it's looking like the potential for a heat wave scenario is still um, looking mainly for the south and the east. Northwards, it's definitely just decreased in the last few runs and last few days as low pressure is starting to push in again from the north. But you can see to our south, we're never far away from the warmer air, and all you need is a day or two of this ridging to move a little bit further north, 100, 200 miles further northwards, and parts of southern England and eastern England, parts of Wales potentially. It could be getting maybe mid to high teens, which would definitely feel very warm compared to what we had last week. If we now have a look at the GEM run, you can see a very similar pattern up the next couple of days. 
Building up those really mild southerly winds, putting up more of a southerly wind here, that could help with more warm air advection, potentially creating a blocking area of high pressure towards Scandinavia, but there's not too many hints of that at the moment. It's still a possibility, but there's nothing really coming into the shorter range at the moment of that. But you can see, it maintains that Euro high, but it's not really getting over the top of the UK. Towards the end of the run, we do try and build up a Scandinavia night, nothing really comes off with that. And as we head towards day 10, the Atlantic is a little bit more blocked out by the European high pressure. We do, especially further southwards, maintain a little bit milder air, potentially under that high, could build quite warm temperatures, potentially maybe 14, 15 degrees. Again, we really would want that high to move a few hundred miles further north and westwards and to really get uh, quite a widespread warm spell and get that fern effect going uh, across some uh, northern hills as well. So models have backed off on the heat wave. But uh, generally still keeping us mild, um, but perhaps a little bit more wet and windy, especially further northwards. When I have a look at the ECMWF, again, it's very similar pattern over the next couple of days. Again, getting that real far fetch southerly wind, and we do maintain those low pressures out in the Atlantic. Um, but it is putting up quite warm southerly winds, and you can see that real warmth over towards the continent, getting into the UK, very warm, but then very cold, just to our northeast. Again, if we do start to build up that higher pressure, we could be pulling that colder air back in, but at the moment, not showing too many signs of that. But as we head towards the end of the ECM WF run, it's very interesting, we start to build a proper high, coming from extension of the Azores high, um, which wouldn't be very, very warm. You can see there is some cooler air underneath it, perhaps frost, especially over Scotland. Um, but further south, what we do have some milder air, we could be seeing some higher temperatures. It wouldn't be a widespread sort of heat wave, as it is, again, as I said, it's an extension of the Azores high, so we're just pulling up, as it moves in, it'll probably be moving into some cooler air, as you can see, to our north. Um, but it will be perhaps, perhaps frosty overnight, but generally very dry. So the Euro high, which could potentially provide some warm conditions, especially south and eastwards, but at the same time could allow cooler and wetter conditions to come in from the northwest, uh, northwestwards area, uh, west areas. But with this uh, Azores extension, it will be largely dry for most of the country, uh, and uh, maybe a little bit colder in the north, but generally very dry, which I think people definitely prefer drier and a little bit cooler in the temperatures uh, than a little bit warmer, but then perhaps a little bit cloudier, uh, more rain, especially for the north and westwards. If we now have a look at the uh, GFS and uh, GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles, you can see at the moment it's a little bit above average, so we get highs of 11, 12 degrees, then it dips below with a cold front again with more rain before we do start to see temperatures really warm up again. And this is where we could have seen that potential heat wave. Again, a few ensembles are, are going up towards that 10 degree line which would be sufficient to give us some very warm temperatures um, but again a lot I'm a bit more skeptical with a colder front moving through you can see that little dip there which is symbolic of lower pressure coming in off the Atlantic but you can still see quite a few precipitation spikes but so definitely does look like the signal for high pressure domination uh, may be starting to wane a little bit but still quite a few um, ensemble members going quite high so if we do get a day or two uh, where the rain holds off and we get some sunshine we could be could see maybe 15 16 degrees potentially but then we do get a bit of a drop off with lower pressure moving in and then generally around maybe just a touch above average again the ensemble members going very cold in the longer time frame but really nothing uh, nothing to say with that and again looking quite dry in the longer term so perhaps more of a signal to higher pressure but again it's not guaranteed but generally above average um and uh, quite unsettled in the shorter term and perhaps maybe a bit more settled in the longer term. I just want to have a quick look at these six o'clock uh, runs for the GFS and you can see towards the longer term definitely more uncertain on the six o'clock run uh, than the midday run was. Um, you can see in the longer term we do have these very bitterly cold ensemble members a lot more in the six o'clock run including the operational GFS. So you can't rule out a very cold spell towards the end of February, start of March. Um, it's not looking likely at the moment but I'd say maybe a 10-20% chance at this stage. Um, 
and equally we have some ensemble members going very warm um, but it's interesting seeing that and again it just shows you the model volatility between each run you can see those ensemble members are disappearing quite quickly on the 12 o'clock run i suspect the six o'clock uh, the 18z run this evening um could perhaps even go uh, some more cold runs or go a bit milder again it's very difficult to pin down anything outside of sort of a seven day time frame at the moment so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribing and i'll see you again for another video tomorrow